one is talking about productivity and unlocking your full potential, but you don't really understand what this means, have the time to look into it, or don't know where to start? Well, I was in this exact situation, and I found this topic so interesting that I've spent a lot of my free time reading books, listening to podcasts, and watching videos on how to be more productive. My goal today is to give you tips that are applicable to you, whether you're a student, busy parent, teacher, or self-employed. Anyone can use the tips that I mentioned in this talk today and apply them to their own situations. I believe that understanding productivity systems can not only lead to personal growth, but also general societal growth. We want to look into a future where our society is as productive and efficient as it can be. So, with that said, let me tell you how I turned things around in my life. I want to start by mentioning a couple of things that are the foundation of everything that I'm going to talk about first. Every day, the brain processes information from things we do, like reading a book, listening to a song, or even talking to a friend. But when there's too much information for you to process, then your brain gets overstimulated. This is called cognitive overload. In this digital age, everything we need or want to know is available at the tip of a finger. However, our brains only have a limited capacity, and when we do something like multitask, it only contributes and adds to the overload. We all know this feeling. We are working on something, and then an email or message pops up. We think we are going to quickly respond and then get back to work. However, this is a grave mistake. According to a uni University of California Irvine study, it takes an average of 23 minutes to refocus on the original task that you were working on. Yes, 23 minutes. If you add this up, this wastes a lot of your time throughout your day and year. This is time you could have spent being more productive. And yes, I know what you're thinking. This is just going to be another talk about reducing our social media usage. And yes, in some ways it is, but it cannot be reiterated enough. Excessive social media usage is extremely damaging to us. Focus on the word excessive, though. Sometimes social media usage can be helpful when wanting to wind down or take a break. However, when this addiction starts changing the way we behave and our performance declines, that's when you know it needs to stop. This is because our brains are constantly changing. They adapt to the way we behave, what we consume, and what we are exposed to. Every time you do anything, a new connection is forged in the brain. And when you repeat these actions, these connections get reinforced. This is the basic outline of neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is vital for a lot of crucial functions like learning, recovering, and adapting to our environment. But it also makes us more vulnerable to external factors, and it can strengthen negative behaviors like excessive social media usage. Additionally, another problem I face is that instead of being productive, I just displace my tasks with newer, less meaningful ones. For example, when I sit down at my desk to do some work, I suddenly get the urge to go through my emails or clean up my desk. While this seems productive, it isn't, and it just makes us feel better about procrastinating and not doing the work that we are supposed to. It tricks us into being productive while we aren't. To solve a lot of the problems mentioned here, there are hundreds of different potential solutions and strategies. Take the Rubik's Cube, for example. I was stumped by this fascinating puzzle, and I knew I had to solve it. But how? You see, I struggled to concentrate for prolonged periods of time, so I incorporated a technique that I had read about, deep work, or more commonly known as the flow state. Deep work is a concept that was created by Cal Newport, a professor at Georgetown University. His definition of deep work is professional activities performed in a state of set distraction-free concentration that push your cognitive capabilities to their limit. Basically, it's a period of time where you focus really hard on the task that you're working on and you eliminate any distractions. This helps you prevent multitasking and procrastinating. By, by using this skill, I was also able to successfully learn how to solve the Rubik's Cube. Deep work is so effective because it steers us away from doing shallow work. Shallow work is work that requires no effort or focus, and you usually do it when you're distracted. 
much like a displacement task. It prevents us from being productive by just giving us the illusion of being productive. And if all of this doesn't work and you struggle to break your addiction, then you may have to resort to extreme measures like a digital detox. You do this by giving up all of your digital devices from your life for some time and not using them. It might seem difficult at first, but it is worth it. It is one of the most effective ways of rewiring your brain and breaking the bad habits. By doing this, you will realize that there's more to life than just a digital presence. You will start enjoying the little things in life. As the famous French mathematician and philosopher Blaise Pascal said, all of humanity's problems stem from man, stems from man's inability to sit quietly in a room alone. I myself did a digital detox and it went really well. I deleted, I, but I did do it on a smaller scale. I, did, I just deleted all of the social media apps from my phone and the other distracting, app, distracting apps. This got my phone usage down to a minimum. But did this make me feel disconnected from my, from my friends? No. Do I still have a great social life? Yes. I have even more meaningful interactions. Now I want to talk to you about my favorite tool, or rather system, that I use in my everyday life. The second brain. The second brain system is a system that was developed by Tiago Forte, a productivity expert. The idea is that everything that lives in your, that doesn't need to live in your actual brain can live in your second brain. Your second brain could be anything. Most commonly, it's a phone or a notebook. Whatever works best for you. I personally use my phone. This is how it works. We constantly take in a lot of information, but you don't want your mind overflowing with things you have to do or remember. This just leads to cognitive overload. What we want to do is close the tabs in our head, heads and declutter our brain. We do this by writing down everything on our mind and organizing it into a space where we can retrieve it later. This way, all the information has its place and you can act on it. Furthermore, you will always stay on top of deadlines and nothing will ever slip your mind again. You can use calendar tasks, calendar apps, or task manager apps to help you out with that. So, this is me nearly done. There's a lot more that can be said about this topic and there are dozens of books that can help you with this. You can also come speak to me later on. But if there's one thing that I want you to take away from this talk, then it's this. Each and every one of you has the power to change their lives. And now it is up to you to act on them. Thank you.